Let's see an example where we have to conduct hypothesis testing for population proportion using the p-value approach. In this example, it says that in December 2001, 38% of adults with children under the age of 18 reported that their family ate dinner together seven nights a week. In a recent poll, 403 of 1,122 adults with children under the age of 18 reported their family ate dinner together seven nights a week. Has the proportion of families with children under the age of 18 who eat dinner together seven nights a week decreased? We'll use the... Um, alpha equals 0 0.05 significance level to conduct this hypothesis testing. So first of all, how do we know that we're dealing with proportion, population proportion here? Well, because 38% represents proportion. In fact, 38% represents population proportion. In the first sentence, they talk about all adults with children under the age of 18, right? So that's population proportion. We have to say that in order to conduct hypothesis testing, there are certain requirements that have to be fulfilled before we even start the hypothesis testing. And those requirements are listed here. Let's see if they're all satisfied for our example. So the first requirement is that the sample is obtained by simple random sampling or the data result from a randomized experiment. Let's see if we have any information about that. Um, what we know about the sample, by the way, yeah, where do we talk about sample here? It's the second sentence. It says that in a recent poll, 403 of 1,122 adults with children under the age of 18 reported their family ate dinner together seven nights a week. Now, it doesn't say specifically, we don't see words, um, simple random sample, right? But every time when you read in a recent poll, it's assumed that that sample was randomly obtained. So these are going to be the key words to check this off. Next, the population is at least 20 times as large as the sample. And that's the same as saying that sample size should be less than 5% of the population. We already heard about that requirement. We already used that requirement um, before. And it's just a different way of saying it. Population is at least 20 times as large as the sample. So if we have about 1,100 adults um, in the sample, well, we know that in the United States, there are millions of adults. So definitely this sample size is small enough. So, or we can say that the population is at least 20 times as large as that sample. So we can assume that condition to be satisfied. Next, the individuals in the population are divided in two categories. To determine that, we just have to look at the context of the problem. And here we talk about proportion of adults that eat dinner together with their families seven nights a week. So what are the two categories that we have here? Well, even like when we look at the sample, we can see that, well, 403 adults ate dinner with their families seven nights a week, and then the rest of them did not eat dinner together with their families seven nights a week. So that makes two categories. We're going to check this off. And the last condition under which we will be able to use the normal distribution is that the following inequality is satisfied. I got 264 which is, of course, greater than or equal to 10. That means that the last condition is satisfied and we can continue with the steps. We already described the null hypothesis. Now let's describe the alternative hypothesis, H1. So alternative hypothesis always states how the population proportion is different from the one that's stated in the null hypothesis. But we have to be specific on how it is different. So sometimes we can simply say, well, it's different. It's not equal that. Or sometimes we can use either greater or less symbol to specifically indicate if it's more than it used to be or it's less than it used to be. For that, we have to read our question again. Um, here in the question, it says, has the proportion of families with children under the age of 18 who eat dinner together seven nights a week decreased. That's going to be the key word for us. What does it mean decreased? It means that now it's less than it used to be, right? This means that the alternative hypothesis will look like this. Proportion 
population proportion is less than the one stated in the null hypothesis. So we're trying to find evidence that population proportion is less than 30, 38%. So this is left-tailed hypothesis structure. Next, we'll need to compute the p-value. The p-value is the key number in the hypothesis testing when we, when we use the p-value approach. So p-value will represent probability of how likely it is to obtain this kind of sample, sample in which 403 adults out of 1,122 eat dinner together with their family seven days a week. So how, how likely to obtain this kind of sample or even more extreme sample um, from the population that has 38% of adults with children that eat dinner with their families seven nights a week. The p-value can be either computed by hand using formula or we can use calculator. In this video I will only show how to find the p-value using the calculator. So let me show the steps. So first you start by pressing stat. Right here, stat. Then you go to tests, or we're doing hypothesis testing, right? So it makes sense that we have to go to tests. Now we have a lot of different tests, and the one that we need when we conducting hypothesis testing for population proportion, and our evidence is based on just one sample, we have to go down to line number five. So here, one stands for one sample, PROP stands for probability, Z-test, well, that's how it's short called because it's based on the normal distribution. Please ignore the numbers I have here. They came from previous example I did. But let's see what kind of information we need to enter. So right here, P with little zero next to it. So it's P sub zero or P naught. Do we know what it is? Well, we do. That's the population proportion from the null hypothesis. Do we have it? We do, so it happens to be the same number that I used to have, so 0 0.38, right? That's what we put here, this number. Next, what is x? Well, x and n, those two numbers describe the sample. We know that n represents the sample size. Well, and x represents the number of individuals with a certain characteristic in the sample. What kind of characteristic are we talking about here in our example? Well, we talk about number of people number of adults that eat dinner with their families seven days a week, right? So that's what x is. In my example, x will be equal to 403. That's the number of adults that have that characteristic. They eat dinner with their families seven days a week. And then n is the sample size, 11, 22. And now calculator wants us to determine what kind of hypothesis structure are we dealing with? And here are three options. See how it says PROP? PROP stands for proportion, population proportion. And the options are pro pro uh, population proportion not equal to that number, population proportion less than P naught, that number, and population proportion is greater than P naught. And to decide which one we have to choose, we simply look at the alternative hypothesis. Here it is, H1, right? The alternative hypothesis. It states that population proportion decreased or less than 0.38. So that means that in the calculator, I will have to choose the second option. Proportion is less than P sub zero, P naught. So I, I highlight it and then press enter. And then I go down, I have a choice of either calculating p-value or drawing a normal curve describing the situation. Well, since in step two, we just need to compute the p-value, I'm choosing calculate, I'm pressing enter, and here it is. Well, there are a couple things here, right? But which one is the p-value? Here it is, it's the third one. P equals 0 0.07539101. That's going to be the p-value. So here are the calculator steps and what we enter it in the calculator. And I'm going to write p-value. So p-value equals, we use capital P for that. 
And once again, that's 0 0.08. Let me remind you that the meaning of the p-value is the probability or the chance of the sample, of the sample, the way it's described here, of this kind of sample, to come from this kind of population, population that has population proportion 38%. We found that it's 8% chance that that kind of sample or sample with this even smaller sample proportion would come from the described population. Now, this is our evidence for rejecting or not rejecting the null hypothesis. But how do we decide whether we reject it or not? Well, remember for that, we have to take this p-value and compare it to given levels of significance. So the given level of significance is 0 0.05 given. And what we do, we have to compare the p-value p -value with alpha. What sign do we use here? Well, obviously 0 0.08 is greater than 0 0.05. So whenever p-value is greater than level of significance, then we do not reject the null hypothesis. Do not reject H naught. In other words, this result showed that, that it's not that unusual that that kind of sample would come from a population that has 38% of adults eating dinner with their family seven days a week. So for that reason, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Now, do we know what the reality is? Well, no, but, but it was enough for us to make us believe that um, the proportion of families that eat dinner together seven nights a week has not decreased. And let's write this all down. And this is how we can phrase the conclusion. There is not sufficient evidence at the given level of significance to conclude that proportion of adults with families that eat dinner together seven nights a week has decreased. Now, we're always going to start conclusion with, the, with those words. There is not a sufficient evidence or there is sufficient evidence. Since we determined that we're not going to reject the null hypothesis, that means that we did not find enough evidence to support the alternative hypothesis claim. So this is how we conduct hypothesis testing for a population proportion using calculator.